What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be working on this Subaru SP170. Now, this is on a nice scooter here, real old frame scooter with a really old and expensive looking gearbox. So it looks like it has two speeds, <clears throat> fast and faster, no reverse, and um, the engine just needs some work. And now this is your basic engine. This is like your 212, your Honda GX 160s, 170s. This is a Robin from Subaru and it's a six horsepower engine. So it's gonna be the same as pretty much everything other than a little differences because Subaru has their own type of carburetor. But it's gonna be a pretty simple repair and we're gonna get right into it. But first of all, if you guys want to, I got some new stickers for the channel. And if you guys want some Repair Gang stickers, just leave a comment down below. I'm going to be giving like 10 of them away. And maybe some more, you know. Just leave a comment and I'll pick some random people to get some stickers. Hey, you never know. I haven't had a stickers in a minute since I first like started doing YouTube. And everybody was giving away stickers. And we set up this tripod and we'll get right into this. Now, a lot of people always want to know what kind of tools I use. Pretty much every repair, you're either going to have a 10 millimeter an eight millimeter, a pair of pliers, and these are just field clamps. You're not gonna use field clamps on every pair, but you pretty much your 10, your eight, and your needle nose pliers are what you're gonna need for, ooh, those are studs though. Oh no, that wasn't supposed to come all the way out. That stud unscrewed when I unscrewed that nut, but that one didn't, so that's good. But that one unscrewed. I'm gonna take off this air filter cover. Yeah, there's going to be a bolt on top. Yep, right there. It's 10 millimeter as well. That one, I'm not going to be able to get my impact in there. I like working on bikes like this. And for those wondering why it's kind of shaky, I do have it up on a jack stand. Because when I start it, I think that back wheel is going to move regardless. So this way I could just run it to make sure everything is working. It's gonna have a little tension because the tubes are still in there. You should just be able to pry that right off. And that's the tube that was holding it on there. Now we have full access to this carburetor here. Let me zoom you in. And here's your on off switch. You notice it's a little different than your Honda style. If anything, this looks more like an old Briggs style carburetor rather than a Honda. I do not like the way this throttle is. I might be able to come out. Choke just pulls out. Come on. It's not quite straight, but it pulled right out. Now you're gonna pull the carburetor out. And this, this Robin engine is not giving me a lot of room. Like this fuel line is just so short. Okay, pulled it out. Get my clamps ready. We know gas is coming out. That's always a good sign. Clamp it up, and then we have access to our carburetor. We'll take this gasket off. Gasket ripped a little bit, nothing too crazy. Still fit right in there. Now we can get the carburetor up on the bit. This is what us small engine mechanics live for, is cleaning carburetors. Now you can clean the outsides and everything, and you should. So I'm gonna spray this. All I'm gonna do is go over, spray it. I guess I could show you. I'm doing it over a piece of cardboard. I'm trying to see, you see the cardboard? So yeah, you're just gonna spray it clean. Just that way, any dirt looked already so much better. We'll just get any dirt and debris off it. The outside is not what matters. Kind of like finding a lover. It's not on the, what's on the outside that counts, it's what's on the inside. Well, we're gonna make it clean anyways, so. Now we do got a gasket here. We can leave this on. It's not gonna impede our cleaning process. 10 millimeter on the bottom. Oh, I'm wrong. 11 or 12, probably 12 millimeter on the bottom. You don't see that every day on carburetors. Normally on the generators, you're gonna use a 14. On Tecumish, you're gonna use a 13. But on 90% of all generators, you're gonna use a 10. And that's an eight. Normally it's the same, but right there, that's an eight or Phillips. Well, it doesn't look seized, the needle I mean. I'm not gonna bother taking that out. I am gonna take out this jet here. You always wanna put counter pressure on when you're taking out 
one of these jets. And I'm going to take a peek just to see if it's see-through. And you guys can see. Let me see if I can get it in here. Is it going to focus? There you go. It's looking a lot bigger of a hole than... But it is see-through, so that is good. I believe there's another removable jet inside. I don't think so. It should just be an emulsion tube. But something should be holding it in place. Well, we don't need to bother taking it all the way out. But let's remove this jet right here. This might just be a stop for the jet. But you can see how this carburetor is a lot different than your standard Honda style carburetors. This does have a jet. Now that we got the carburetor pretty much 90% dis disassembled, we could spray carburetor cleaner in all the holes that matter. That hole, see, this hole right here, when you spray in it, it should come out the bottom part here. So I got this little drill, and I'll have a link in the description, but I'm pretty much going to go in there. I don't even think I can reach that far back in there. Let me get in here, too. I'm going to get up in here. Can you see, that's a drill bit. Three speeds. I love it. We'll get up in here. That one's coming out that part. Now let's spray up in here. No, that's coming where it's supposed to go. Now we're going to spray inside the idle jet where we took off that little brass piece. Perfect. We will clean off this little brass piece here. Perfect. Give one little squirt into the jet. Perfect. Now we just put it all back together. Pretty good, pretty good. Not too shabby if I do say so myself. Here's an adjustment, which I never mess with. 90% of the time you do not need to mess with the adjustments unless the customer tried to bypass it, you know, by breaking off the safety, which you'll see a lot on two-stroke equipment. Because people on YouTube show, show them how to, you know, oh, if you need to get more than what they're recommending, Here's how you do it. These always face out to the left of how the carburetor sits. So the carburetor sits like this to the left. And I've never seen one that wasn't facing to the left. Maybe they're out there. And if they are out there, email me a picture. And not only will I still send you a sticker, but it'll prove me wrong. But so far, if the carburetor sits like this, that's to the left. Now it could be slightly forward to the left, slightly back to the left. If you do it in the front, it's not gonna work. If you do it to the right, it's not gonna work, but it has to be to the left. Carburetor sits like this, drains to the left. Let's go put it back on the machine. Okay, here we go. We're gonna lose a little bit of gas again once I release this. But the faster we go, the better. God, they really do not give you any room for that fuel line. I'll have to push it back in a little more here in just a second. Let me get this throttle cable in. Let me get the spring in. That's the worst part where you're leaking gas everywhere. And you gotta rush it. Push it back. And as I push it back, the whole machine's gonna fall. That's a pain. But it's back on there. And we put the choke back on. Now we just could set it back up. Let me make sure everything is on the up and up. Turn the field to the on position for a second. Make sure it's not leaking any gas. Doesn't seem to be. Now when I'm putting this back on, I'm feeling the behind and putting that little thing back in. We're gonna turn. It's cool, you actually don't, it doesn't matter which position the on or off switch for the fuel is when you put this back on. Let me get my tin. This thing seemed to have really clean oil in it. So I don't think I'm gonna have to change the oil on this. I'm hoping and praying this thing just starts up now. That'd be like a dream come true. See the throttle if it works. The throttle is working pretty good. I don't know where they had the spring at. But it is automatically returning. That is automatically returning, so... I don't know where they had that spring at. Um, let me put this top 10 millimeter in. Even though that one's not 100% necessary. We're gonna put that in actually at the end i want to make sure this thing fires up okay here we go we're gonna fire it up gas is on and on i'm pretty sure right nope that's closed down is open let's let some gas get in there i gotta oil this clutch the clutch isn't spinning like i want it to 
It feels hot. But this thing, this is spinning, but it's not catching. So let's see if we can oil it. Now see, this is the part where I don't have the most experience with centrifugal clutches. I'm an engine guy. I work on engines. I'm gonna oil this chain up. And also the brake could have been engaged too, but I don't think that's the case. Let me start it back up and see what happens. Let me go open my garage door. Okay. Let's try this again. Go away, doggies. Now it's going. The problem is, is that it's not revving up. Now what is all this? Is it just for me? It's not revving up on its own. I had to manually rev that up. Oh, see when I was pulling this, nothing. I had to actually reach in here and I was revving that up and then it started spinning real good. So it's a good thing I left that top bolt off. Shit, my fucking chair just broke. Almost died. I'm okay. So now why are we not revving up? Is something blocking it? Now see something we can do here is I can put these on. And then I can start it without the air filter on. And I want to see, because I'm wondering if the governor is this bad on the inside. <clears throat> Let's start it up. Oh, I'm a dumb. So I found out what's wrong. Sorry I wasn't recording, but this spring, and I'm a dumbass for not even thinking about this, goes to the governor. So when this pulls, it pulls that spring, pulls the governor forward, allows it to run. And that could have been the problem all the, together to begin with is if the spring was disconnected but now in order to put that spring back on i actually have to remove the fuel tank and i'm wondering if this thing is leaking oil too i don't think it is i think it was just my pb blaster yeah it still has good oil in it but like i said i gotta i have to remove the fuel tank to put that spring back on Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm a big dummy. Sitting there going, what could be wrong with this limit? And I just thought about that too. I was like, oh yeah, that's what that spring goes to. I've seen people ghetto springs before in random locations. And I was like, that spring looks OEM. So I wonder what's going on with that. I'll tell you what's going on with it. It's disconnected. As you guys seen when I cleaned the carburetor earlier that this son of a bitch does not have a lot of fuel line to spare. That one I could get out with the socket. It is nighttime, but in the morning, once I get this thing running, I'll take it for a spin. And it's always good to wait one day to make sure everything you did wasn't a fluke. Because how many times have you repaired something? And then literally the next day it's not running again. So sometimes going at it the next day also allows you to take a break from it to realize what you're messing up. And if I never if I didn't think about that spring there, I would have probably took a break from it, came back to it, finished the video tomorrow, telling you guys, you know, sitting there watching other videos on it, you know, kind of just playing around. Here's my dog, Chicken Nuggy. Come here, come here. Where you at? Go. The Nuggy. It's a Nuggy. Oh, here comes Lady. Here comes Lady. Okay, go lay down, guys. Go, go, go. Oh, sorry about that. But you know, dogs never hurt. This is the worst bolt here. Seriously, because I've just been running this thing, so the muffler's hot. That means I can't get in there with my fingers and undo it. Sometimes I wonder who engineers these things. It all fits together nicely, but it is not user friendly. Maybe that's how they want it. So you have to take it to a Subaru technician and spend a lot more money than what I'm gonna charge. So you know Subaru is making them bucks. Come on, baby. How many more threads you got? Not a lot. 
I might just put this bolt back in tomorrow. Perfect, with those three bolts off, we can remove the fuel tank. Like I said, there's not gonna be a lot of room in here. So I'm gonna try to look and see where the spring, now is it right here? That opens it, if I put it right there. Now when I throttle it, it's opening it. And it should bring back down to normal. And the governor should bring it back down like this. Okay, I guess before we put the fuel, before we fully reattach the fuel tank, let's give it a run. Now that's working like it's supposed to. Beautiful, right? Where's my tin? So we got two bolts to put back in tomorrow. And I'm gonna put this air filter cover back on. Ah, shit. That came loose. That's okay. I'm gonna screw it back in. There we go. And I think for a while, once I tell the customer how to take care of this and all the maintenance, we shouldn't really have to worry too much about the that bolt coming off. I hate putting that in because now it's hot. I said I'll do it tomorrow. But I'm already here, so at least hand start it. I guess I could just finish it up. Perfect. But this thing's pretty much ready to get back to the customer once I reattach the gas tank in the morning. But I'm happy with this repair. So again, we're going to test this thing in the morning. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. But it'll be like two seconds. Okay guys, it is now the next day. And we're going to give this puppy a run and see if she moves. And then we should be done with it. So let's switch on.
Woo!